Hello, and welcome back to the Mayo Clinic Medscape video series. I am Francisco Lopez Jimenez, cardiologist and professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic. Today, we will be discussing prevention versus reversion heart disease. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Steve Kopeski, consultant and professor of medicine and expert in this area. Welcome, Dr. Kopeski. Thank you, Dr. Lopez Jimenez. Pleasure to be here. I have a very intriguing an important question for you. Is, is coronary artery disease regression possible? Yes, a very good question. Coronary disease regression is possible. It's been shown in studies, but it's not easy to do. Um, and patients ask us this frequently, can I make my arteries open up again? And I tell them uh, the answer, yes, but you know, I also ask them, do you go to your dermatologist and say, can you make your skin look like it was when you're 18 years old again, or your hairdresser? And, make your hair young again. So we have to be reasonable in understanding that while we can regress some lesions, we can't change all of them. Good. Now, do you think that all types of plaques can regress? Well, certainly there are a couple of types of plaques. One are the lipid-rich plaques that are more malleable and removable. The other are the calcified plaques. In the calcified plaques, uh, even in the study like TACT, which we were part of at Mayo, which was a chelation study, show we really can't get rid of once it's there. I've been for the, the term hardening of the arteries comes from, as we all know. But the lipid rich plaque can be changed. And uh, we've seen this on some CT scan studies where we do serial CT scans for coronary calcium. Uh, lower the cholesterol, and since the calcium score is a density score, as you take the cholesterol out, the calcium stays, the calcium density goes up. So, so there are different plaques, and not all are, are malleable. Um, another question is, what do coronary ultrasound studies teach us about cholesterol levels and plaque regression? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, insightful area in that some of the PCSK9 inhibitor studies actually include uh, substudies of ultrasound of the coronary arteries and showed that uh, in relation to low density lipoprotein or LDL cholesterol, that as we lowered it, you got more regression. And at about an LDL of 80, everything else being equal, about half the, of the uh, subjects had coronary artery disease regression. But as you got the LDL lower, down below 60, 90% of the regressible plaques or the lipid-rich plaques could show a regression. So it's uh, it's a great insight, and that may be that some of our LDL goals may be a little higher than we want. And uh, so it may be more like what we're seeing from Europe, where they're suggesting lower LDL goals uh, than we are in this country. Good. Uh, do you think that it's a single medicine that uh, will cause coronary plaque regression? Yeah, well, the, the, we certainly see it advertised a lot that take this medicine and almost like eat this food and it will make things better. You know, I'm not sure that uh, a single medicine, but if there is one, it's going to be some of the LDL reducing uh, compounds. You know, the PCSK9s, the other ones that may be coming along, Certainly statins, uh, every study that's been done has used uh, the statins pretty much uh, if they use a medicine. So clearly uh, that's a very important medicine, but it's not everything. You just can't take one pill and uh, not worry about the rest of your lifestyle. Yeah, it seems like we have been uh, focusing a lot of our attention in cardiology towards cholesterol uh, treatment, which is a major factor and, and certainly a major one to achieve uh, plaque regression, right? But uh, w what about other factors? So what, what uh, have we learned from clinical trials about the essential factors necessary to achieve coronary artery disease regression in a patient? Yeah, a very good point. And there haven't been that many really well done studies, but the ones that have been done have focused on three areas. One is to get regression, remove causative agents. By that, I mean, remove the smoking remove the blood pressure, remove the high cholesterol. We have to do that because if we don't, you can still have regression even if everything else looks good. The second uh, thing is to work on the cholesterol. Uh, clearly, 
Almost all studies have included statins, uh, depending on when they were done. Uh, statins are important. Uh, the new PS PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, that's an important of this to try to get the LDL certainly well under 60. And the third area, and this is the thing that none of us really appreciate, is that almost every study that has looked at coronary artery disease regression and achieved it has addressed some other factors we don't normally think of, like stress. They've addressed stress in terms of putting in meditation or looking at the lifestyle heart trial done you know, over 20 years ago by Dean Ornish, heavily funded and heavy use of yoga uh, to help reduce stress. So we have to pay attention to stress because it, it plays a huge role in damaging our endothelium, which leads to progression of coronary disease. Uh, it seems like coronary plaques cannot disappear, that some obstructions will continue, but the nature of the plaque changes, and that, I, that is actually very important for the patient, right? So that's perhaps one of the main messages. Uh, and the second is that it is, it is not just about the cholesterol, even though uh, for the plaque to regress, the cholesterol has to be low and, and perhaps lower than what we have been telling patients for years, and to control the rest of the risk factors, exercising, lowering the stress, healthy diet, et cetera, right? A any other key points, uh, Steve, that you would like yes. to make? It, uh, one way to explain this to ourselves and to our patients is inflammation. So anything that inflames the lining of our arteries and uh, can cause problems. You know, a recent study in Jack came out looking at uh, inflammation in diet, uh, red meats, uh, processed meats, ultra processed foods, you know, sugar sweetened beverages, uh, refined carbs, processed carbs, all increased inflammation uh, by some of the inflammatory parameters. The foods that decreased it, the fruits, the vegetables, the legumes, the whole grains, or great, we know can really help uh, reduce our inflammatory pathways in our arteries. And, uh, and again, that's one reason that may be stress, lack of sleep, a lack of exercise, which we all know are pro-inflammatory, causes a, a plays a role also. Now that's, I think that's very important because that helps us to understand that coronary disease, uh, the, that the plaques are not just like a fix uh, problem. It's, it's something dynamic. It's something that uh, involves inflammation, uh, density, amount of cholesterol, all those things. So I think we have been just trying to be very simplistic and that, that doesn't necessarily help. Well, thank you, Dr. Kopetsky, uh, for those very important insights. Thank you for joining us on theheart.org, Medscape Cardiology. Mm -hmm.